Thank you for joining me today on Paint a Beautiful Picture. Today we're going to discuss how to find an answer. <laughs> you know, when you give your kids tons of information, they don't know where that information came from. And then when they need to go and find that information themselves, they don't have any idea how to do that. Let me tell you, as good as Google or Bing or other available things are, I think that in general, we as adults, and we have certainly passed this on to children, have become overly dependent upon particular search engines. And they are limited to the vantage point of the person who developed that search engine. So though I'm not opposed to going and looking online, because heaven knows there are days when Google on my phone can be a good friend, I want to talk about the principle of helping your child learn where to go in order to find answers. This is a big thing because none of us know everything. I got to tell you, since I was a little kid, I have been endlessly, insatiably curious. I want to know everything about everything, especially the things that interest me. Of course, because I'm a little older person, I didn't have the internet available to me and for that reason, I think I know quite a bit about where to go to find things. So let's talk about this. One of the things you can teach your child is the value of the library. Of course, in the old days, we had a card catalog with all those little three by five cards that you had to dig through. And what was fascinating was when you were looking for a particular thing, you couldn't find that card, but you'd find, find other cards that were of great interest. I think one of the challenges today is those physical card catalogs in general don't exist. We look up a specific thing on the, the library's computer-oriented card catalog and you find that thing or you don't, but you miss everything around it. So one of the things I taught my sons was when you go into the library and you're looking for the one thing you want, go to the, the shelf and when you find that one, look all around you. So I would still suggest that to you. First of all, you need to familiarize your child with the Dewey Decimal System so they know how to go through the library and find the specific things they're looking for. If you are unfamiliar with the Dewey Decimal System, then one of the things you need to do, possibly, is to learn how to use the Dewey Decimal System yourself so that you know what you're looking for in certain areas of the library. So if you go to the library every single week, and not only did I take my sons every week to the library, I took my grandsons to the library every week. And my one grandson loves the library. He, he's a really active kid. He loves to do all kinds of crazy stuff. But I asked him just at Christmas, just a couple months ago, if you got to do anything in the world on a day when you have the day off, what would you do? And he said, go to the library. So obviously... He understands the value of what is at the library, what you can learn and gain at the library. So you teach them to go to the library. You show them what reference materials are, whether those are atlases, encyclopedias. There are other kinds of references, but I won't go into great detail with you. That's probably a great start. And you let them start looking at books, even ones which you are not allowed to check out and find out what's available to learn. Then you start helping them look at things like how to build a birdhouse or how to do ceramics, how to paint with acrylics, how to paint animals, how to draw cartoons, how to do anime. You cannot imagine how many books there are on how many subjects. And the difference of looking at it electronically where you're just whooping through there and looking at it on the page and really absorbing that and the mechanics of putting your hands on something is an element of learning that we frequently miss when we're just accustomed to doing everything on the computer or on a tablet. So I'm really a big proponent of get them to the library, help them learn how to get answers about a lot of things. Of course, if they're trying to learn things about their body, about nutrition, how to cook vegetarian meals. All of that is at the library. I'm telling you, get your kids to the library. Of course, another way of how to find answers is go to an expert. I want to say this to you. 
gently. There are a lot of self-proclaimed experts in the world. Doesn't really mean that they are. <laughs> Just so you know. If someone repeats over and over and over and over and over and over again, great information, they actually probably are an expert. If someone has a cooking show, I, I won't name names, but there are a couple of people in the world who really are very extraordinary, uh, what I'll call generally good cooks. And so you can watch them on the internet, you can pull them up on YouTube, and you can really learn a great deal of things when it comes to handcrafts knitting, crochet, uh, hand applique, embroidery. You can learn so much online. However, when you get your hands on an expert personally and you get to take a class or a workshop, you sign your child up for a series of classes, there is a lot to be said for both group instruction and individual instruction that is live. You just see and learn things differently. You can look at every beautiful picture and illustration in the world of a quilt. But once you pick up a quilt in your hands and you see the interplay of fabric and stitching and color and design, it's just not the same. So find an expert, help your child find an expert, and go pick their brain or take a class with them or see if they do individual sessions. This is really true in counseling. And I told you this before, and I'm going to say it again. You go to a counselor, and it's not really working for you. You're not feeling any click. You don't feel comfortable about that. Do you know what? You don't have to keep going. I'm telling you right now, I'm going to give you permission. You've gone to someone, and that's not really working out for you. You really aren't getting any kind of answers or things that work for you. Bail, honey. That's your money. You don't have to go there. <laughs> I promise. There are tens of thousands. Actually, there are hundreds of thousands of counselors available, yeah, go look for another one. No joke. Find somebody who has the expertise and the understanding or personality that can help you, all right? Teach your child to be unafraid. I'm going to tell you something. When my kids were little boys, because they're male, you know, the famous joke about how a guy will drive around somewhere for three hours before he's going to stop and ask for directions, that's not a joke. That's really a very male thing. I don't want my sons to grow up and be unwilling or unable to ask for help. And so I would give them money, I would give them a list, and I would have them walk to the grocery store. I just live literally like catty corner across the street. It wasn't a hardship for them to walk to the grocery store. And I'd say, I know you're not going to find these things. I mean, I would put difficult things on the list intentionally. So you're going to need to ask for help. So whether you go together and you ask for help or whether you split up, and I would often give them two lists. I often wanted them to have to split up because my younger son would depend upon my older son, who was a lot more outgoing, and say, you need to find everything on this list. Don't come home till you have it all, and you're going to need to ask for help. Or I would be in the grocery store with them shopping, and I would say to one of them, I need you to go get me basil. We'll say that. My son would be like, what, Mama? I'd say, you know, it's a spice, that little green stuff that goes in spaghetti. Oh, I know. I love how that smells. Yeah, you need to go find me some basil. I don't care if it's McCormick or some off-brand. Just go get me some basil. And, of course, he's not going to find it. I knew that. That was the point. He's going to have to ask for help. Sometimes I would take my kids shopping for clothes, even, and I would say to them, you know, the person in the store who stocks things, they know better than anyone what is in this store. So if you have it in your mind, I want a blue IZOD, a particular kind of collar, two buttons, short sleeves with a band. Okay, great. Just walk right up to the salesperson rather than walking through the store and wandering around for half an hour. I guess you can tell I'm not a big uh, window shopper. I'm a go get it, get out of the store person. I know that's unusual for a woman, but that's really who I am. I'd say you walk up to the sales clerk, you tell them exactly what you want, and you know what? In two seconds, they're going to walk over there, find it, hand it to you. You'll have what you wanted. They learned how to ask for help. You know, that's really important because your whole life long, you're going to need information. You're going to need help. You're going to have to find answers. They might as well learn how to ask for them because all of us are going to need help finding the answers. 
Then there get to be harder things, things that even you aren't going to know, such as one time when my son came to me about a really difficult problem. He had been sexually molested, and he said, Mom, i got to go talk to someone about this because, and I won't go into detail because it's his life. Wow, as much as I know about a lot of things, I didn't know what to do about that. I called all over. I kid you not. I called really upper level people I knew in a whole nother state. And I said, tell me where in the world I'm supposed to get help about this. And they did tell me. You have to have possibly read enough or studied enough on the internet to have a sense of things that if you really hit a big problem, you know the right person to call to say, where do I go about this? You have to have some kind of resources available. And so let me tell you, pastors, sometimes they know the answers, sometimes they don't. Maybe you need to call a seminary. Maybe you need to call someone higher up in the, I guess I'll call it the echelon of, you know, administration and, and get an answer or at least ask where you can get the answer. When you're dealing with things like medicine, we know you might start with your local doctor, but you might end up at a big university hospital. You might even end up at the Mayo Clinic or Johns Hopkins. You go to the level of expertise that you need to go to in order to find an answer. Okay. Things about your car. You can go to a local mechanic and he can mess around and take care of some things, but some things really major that go on, you have to go right to the dealer and those very well-trained mechanics with specific information about a particular kind of vehicle, they're the ones who are going to be able to take care of that. You have to find someone with a level of expertise who can give you the answers that you need. And don't be afraid to keep going. Don't say, well, I asked and no one could help me. If you really need that information, you keep searching till you find someone who can give it to you. And you tell that to your child very plainly. Sometimes the first person or the first 10 people that you ask, they may not really give you a satisfactory answer. And it is absolutely crucial for you to know you keep looking till you find someone who can. I want to tell you this. As a teacher, I used to tell my students. I don't know is a correct answer. <sighs> you know, that kind of bored them occasionally because other teachers don't like that answer. Let me tell you, if someone asks me a question, I have no idea what the answer is. I don't know is the right answer, okay? Your child comes to you and they say, Mom, what about this? Dad, what about that? And you don't know the answer? You don't have to bluff them. You don't have to try to prove that you're the adult and you know everything. No, you don't. Just be truthful. I don't know, but I will find out for you. Or we can work on this together. Let's try to find this out together. I'm going to end with this. My dad was a carpenter. He showed me the difference between various kinds of wood. I got really interested in looking at trees, the bark of trees, uh, the, the body of trees. Branches and trunks don't have the same kind of wood or not at least the same density of fiber in the wood. There are so many cool things to learn about. My dad taught me so many things about wood. He taught it to me by letting me put nails in and pull nails out. Some wood split if you don't put the nail in correctly with enough force. Some split as you pull the nail out. Some woods smoothly plane and saw easily. Some do not. Even with a really good saw blade, a brand new one, some wood is still going to have rougher edges that you have to sand down more vigorously than others. Who knew, right, that there's so much to know about wood? But you talk to a carpenter or a cabinet maker, there's a great deal to know. And so you find out what your child is interested in, and then you help them learn how to find answers. Our world has so many amazing, fascinating, exciting things to learn. Help your child develop the principle of how to find an answer about the things that they are interested in learning. <laughs> it's actually really fun. I love to learn. And so I invite you to help your child learn how to find the answer. Thank you so much for joining me today on Paint a Beautiful Picture. If you learned something today, if you enjoyed today's broadcast, please feel free to share this with a friend 
and I will look forward to seeing you again soon. You may find additional information on our paintabeautifulpicture.com website. Additionally, you may watch me on Rumble, and you may also listen to a podcast on Buzzsprout or Spreaker, all under the name Paint a Beautiful Picture. If you like this video, please give me a thumbs up. You may subscribe, and if you are interested in receiving notifications, please hit the notifications button.